everybody, it's Michelle up here in Northern Illinois Zone 5, or depending on where you are, maybe it's down here in Northern Illinois Zone 5. We are going to do a porch makeover today and flip for fall. I am ready for fall. You know, this summer here in Northern Illinois, it's been kind of hot and it's been kind of dry. There are still things going really well out in the garden, but here on my porch, I am ready for a flip and a change of season. So we're going to start today, and there's no pumpkins yet because it's a little bit early for pumpkins, but we're going to change out the decor. We're going to refresh some of the pots that we have right here by the entrance. We've got two wreaths. One we're going to make from scratch, and the other one, we're just going to refresh it up, and then we're going to flip some of the decor. And, you know, I'm always looking for different ideas of what to do on my porch to make it look kind of cool. I always watch other people's stations or I go to Pinterest and I'm looking for ideas. So I'm doing this because I'm hoping that maybe somebody out there will be inspired by what it is that I do. I hope anyways. If this is your first time here, welcome. I'm so glad that you decided to join us. Please subscribe below if you haven't already. And for all of you guys out there that are faithful and you've been watching and you subscribe thank you so much because I certainly couldn't do this without your support and I love that you love watching the videos so without further ado let's get started the first thing I'm gonna do is clear it all out so I can clean it up and then let's get to making it pretty this is my really sorry poorly neglected Boston fern he was actually doing really well and took, until I took a four-day road trip and then nobody watered him and it was like in the 90s and he's not doing so well and I don't know if I'm even going to try and salvage him or if I'm just going to flip out into something else because it's looking really, really rough. Look at that. Bad, Michelle. Bad, bad, bad. That's the only one that looks this bad. I feel bad that I kind of sort of killed him. I think one of the cooler things that I did to this house, and we probably did it maybe four years after we moved in, this whole porch here used to be like wooden planks, like a deck, and it had three wooden steps that led up to the front door, and they were just little, you know, skinny steps. What we did was we ripped it all out because inevitably every summer a yellow jacket's nest would form underneath the deck, and Glenn and I would be walking from the car to the house, and we'd get stung in the ankles and stung in the legs pretty much all summer long or we'd be out here you know trying to eradicate the nest and we'd never get them all because they were underneath the wood planks so we finally were like let's rip it all out so we ripped it out and we had all these pavers left over from you know 15 years of landscaping you never use a hundred percent of everything and so I figured out the measurements and then I figured out a pattern to put like this rug it looks like a rug a big rug done in pavers and I don't know ever since we did that I love coming out here because I don't have to worry about the bees stinging me in the ankles. And so I thought I'd give you a little look at that because I thought it turned out really good. And I love that it doesn't get icy in the winter. It holds up really well. I haven't had to re-sand it yet at all. I don't have insects or anything burrowing up through it. And it just makes this nice area for us to have to sit out in and to decorate because I love to decorate the porch and flip it for the seasons. But let me show you the pavers. They look so cool. You do have to step up from the driveway up and that's how I eliminated the third step. But I started with the bullnose pavers and then, you know, I did a nice ribbon in black that goes uh, right here. And then you step in and we've got some square pavers here. And then we go, see, we just keep going different colors. And then I used the big pavers in the center to create like the main rug of it. Sorry about that, I spilled water right there when I was picking the plants up. And so it just goes all the way through and then you come over here and then we created a bigger stoop and just one step. And then when you go out over here, this is where we like to grill. And then, I'm sorry, all the stuff that I moved is all cluttered around, but then you go from here and you step down into this little walkway right here and then that takes you out to the garden. But I just think that this thing turned out so cool and I love it. And I don't get stung by bees anymore. 
This is the color of my brick. And as you can see here, I've got some lighter colors splashed in here in a couple, you know, different places throughout the brick. And so what I did was I picked a paint that was gonna pull out those lighter colors. Painting your front door is one of the cheapest ways that you can bring more curb appeal to your house. Now, I know that all those dark colors are, and those moody colors are all the rage right now, but my porch is dark enough as it is because that way is east and that way is north. So I get great morning light in here, but not so great light, you know, in the afternoon. And it's not like I want to make it darker by making dark colors. When we moved in, everything was brown. The roof was brown. The door was brown. I'm like, oh, I don't like that. So I painted it yellow, and I really like how it lightened it up. So if you look up, see, it's just got a wood ceiling up there, and it's yellow too. So now I'm going to paint the door, and it's just time for a refresh. So we're going to do that just to give it some pop because it's kind of dirty. It needs to be painted. All right, I am going to use a Pittsburgh paint. This is a satin. It's for exterior application and it's the grand distinction uh, line. It's a paint and primer all in one. So I don't know, let's paint. Ooh, I like that color. It's like a lighter yellow. All right, let's get to it. is I'm going to switch out my pillows. Now, I don't go buy new pillows. I have cases that go over each of the pillows. That way, I can just change them out seasonally versus having to buy new pillows all the time. And I like that I can just switch the cases out. So they just, they pull right out. These are machine washable. I love that about it. And this is an indoor outdoor pillow. So then I'm just going to take my new pillow case, dun, 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 find the opening. And I'm going to slide my pillow in there. I love that I can do this. I have them uh, for Christmas too. And you can always change them out if you get tired of this pillowcase. So this is going to be my fall pillowcase. Isn't that nice? And I have two of those. So let's get them flipped out. Here they go. And I'm going to take these two and throw them in the washing machine. One of the things I also like to do is I do like to dust off my leaves and I'll just use a little bit of soap and water to clean them off and I'll do both sides. Now you can use alcohol as well, but this just kind of gets the dust off of them and anything that might be on them. I don't like to use any insecticides. This is, I'm, I'm not sure the exact cultivar, but it's a philodendron and I've been dragging this thing around for 25 years. We lived in South Carolina for like 10 years and that's where I got this plant and I've had it ever since and I moved here in 1999. So this one is really old and I've half killed it like five times, but it loves it on this porch and every year it goes inside and it looks fabulous. So let's keep cleaning it up. I like to do is refresh my pots for fall. Now this one doesn't look so bad. This one had the Super Tunia Mini Vista Scarlet in it, which is right here. I've got a potato vine here. This is the Marguerite. And then I got a Baby Moses uh, Cypress up here. And I've been pretty happy with how this has performed for the most part all season. But I think I want to refresh it and make it look a little more fall. So I am going to leave some of the Super Tunias in here and some of the potato vine, but I need to make room for some other things that'll make it look more fall. So I want to put those celosias in that I bought when I was in St. Louis. So here I've got the twisted dark orange and I've got the twisted red currant. So I definitely want to put those in there. I also have some small moms that aren't open yet. I have some Rebecca's. I know I have a few things that I brought over. So let's trim it up and see where we've got room to 
fit some fall product in here and make it look more fall. So basically what I'm gonna do is I'm just going to look for places where I can add, okay, and trim out. Okay, so I think I wanna trim some of this potato vine out. So I'm actually gonna go all the way down to where I planted it, which is way down in here. I don't know, I've got more than one potato vine in here. I'm thinking maybe I wanna keep the back one and take this whole front one out. So I actually think, I know you're like, no, but I'm like, yes, I need to make room. So I'm gonna pull this whole one out and I'm gonna make a big hole in there. See? See that big hole I made? Now I can plant something else, but I still have potato vines, see? And I can move that around. Look at that big guy. Bye-bye. You were beautiful, but now it's time for something else. I also think I'm gonna take this one out right here because he's pretty scraggly underneath here. Kind of got drowned out by the potato vine. So I'm gonna pull this one out as well. See, he's just kind of real leggy and scraggly, so I'm gonna pull him out. All right, so now I've made this nice big hole in here, which is good. And I think I'm gonna trim this one up a little bit. He's actually going down and around the back and I'll get all my stuff out of there. So I'm gonna come in here. Here's some more of the potato vine. Oh my, here's a big, look at that. <laughs> yep, they make potatoes. So a big root down here, I can see it. It's way down here. He was happy in there. Let me see if I can get that out. See, there's some more. Okay, I am gonna cut, or actually I'm gonna pull this one out right here. Yep. He's just leggy and scraggly and it's time for him to come out. And I think I'm gonna leave this back one in. I'm gonna leave him in, in the back here. I'm gonna take all of this out. Okay, let me trim that out. Any broken ones, we'll trim those out. Any brown ones, okay, he's, he's totally fine. All right got some brown back here so I'm gonna just kind of pull this brown out back here okay I decided to pull all all of it out I know I probably should have just left it alone but now I'm I'm committed now I pulled it all out because the more I pulled it out the more scraggly it started to become so now I want to make it look like fall so I'm going to use some of this tall celosi and I'm gonna put it in the back so I have this yellow one here called yellow fire Okay, it's just a little bitty pot. And I have enough dirt in here that I probably won't need to add any dirt. I might have to top it off maybe, uh, but I don't think I'll have to uh, add a whole lot. This one is called Fire Orange, so I'm gonna use that one as well. And I'm gonna use these both over here. And I'm gonna just tuck those right in there. There we go. I like the yellow and the orange. I think that's really pretty. All right, the next thing I'm gonna put in here is next to my potato vine, which is the only thing I left in, and the baby Moses, I'm going to use a Osaka red kale. Now, I like kale because kale, the colder it gets, the better it looks, and it can take you through uh, frost. So it's gonna be in here for a while. And the big thing with fall pots is you can really pack them out because they aren't going to be in here long enough to put on so much growth that you have to worry about whether or not you're overcrowding so you can really pack everything in here okay so there's one of my cabbages then I'm going to be putting in the celosias that I got and I'm going to put them back to back right here so I'm going to put the twisted orange in the front like this and you can put stuff at a little bit of an angle in the pot too and that's okay and then I got the twisted red currant. That's this one here. I'm gonna put that one, because it's a little bit higher, I'm gonna put it right behind it. Man, I'm making a mess down here. Okay. Then I'm just keep pulling the dirt over this way. I think I might have to go get a little dirt. I didn't think I'd need any, but I probably should go get some. All right, be right back. Let me go get some dirt. Okay, I had an open bag of organic potting soil from a spoma in the garage. So we'll just use that to finish backfilling with. So in there we go. 
All right, then on the other side of this, I'm gonna put another cabbage. So I'm gonna do the exact same one. And again, I'm going to knock the excess dirt off the outside back into the pot here so that I don't take up so much space. And I still got lots of roots on there. Okay. And this one here, I'm gonna put right here. And I'm gonna put it kind of at an angle like this. All right. There we go. Backfill that. And then we're gonna come along the other side back here and we're gonna put some uh, Mums and Rebecca is back here. Okay, now I'm to the back because you do see this pot from all sides because even though you're approaching the porch, when you leave the house, you see this side here. So I am going to be putting some orange mums in here. And the mums I'm going to use are from the Gigi series and they're just butted up. There's no flowers on them yet because I don't want them to be done in a week. Because once mums open up, they really don't last very long. So I, if I do use them in here, I'm going to use ones that are closed. But then if they do blow out, I'm gonna put them both together so that that way if they blow out, I can just pop in two more. Okay, and then back here I have this hole and I'm gonna put a Rebecca in here. This is an annual Rebecca here in zone five. This is called Sonora and it's kinda of high. See, it's a little bit higher. So see, it's gonna give me some height back here. So I'm gonna pack two of those right next to each other and these will continue to bloom as long as I fertilize them, which I will still be, you know, fertilizing these once a week with miracle Grow, so that that way they get food because I still want them to produce and stay beautiful uh, probably until almost Halloween. Check it out, I think it turned out really good. So I've got the coxcomb celosius here and then I have two of the kales, the Nagoya rose. I kept the baby tut and I capped one of the potato vines and trimmed it up. See, and then I have a Sonora here. I put some landscape lights in it, so I think that'll look really cool. There's solar. And then I tucked in an orange Gigi Mum here. I've got the orange and the yellow Celosia. These are the upright Celosias in the back. And then I brought some of the potato vine around, and see, I used a landscape staple to kind of tuck it up here so that that way it's in the back as well. And then I tucked in two more little cabbage right there. Uh-huh, let's come around the other side. See, because as you're leaving, you see this side. So I tucked in two more of the cabbages here. Uh, these are actually, they're kale, not cabbage. The Nagoya Rose, same ones, they're just smaller. And then see, back here I have two more of the Sonoras, right back there, and then two more of the GG Orange. And so I use little mini ones and then two of the, the bigger kales in there. But look at that, isn't that great? And then when pumpkins are ready, see, I'll put some pumpkins right here. So that'll look great. All right, this is my big wreath that I put over the light sconce by the garage. And as you can see, I mean, the bow is looking really rough on it. See how rough that is? And some of the stuff is starting to fade and some of it's starting to fall out because I haven't done anything to this wreath, I don't know, I'd say like three years. So probably, that's what I'd say, that's probably about average every three years. I revamped the wreath and it holds up pretty well for me for about three years. So this is being exposed to the elements outside. It is, you know, underneath the, I guess, I don't know what you call it, the little eaves there that come over, but you know, wind and rain and stuff still run into it. And I store it in the basement every year and it's only out for maybe, I don't know, I, I keep mine out until I switch it out to the Christmas wreath. So all the way till Thanksgiving, just about. Uh, so it stays out for a long time and I usually put it out usually around mid-September, which is where we are right now. So about, you know, two and a half, two and a half months. So yeah, it's exposed uh, to a lot of elements, but it's holding up really well. And it is just, it's just a grapevine wreath and it's just a big, just a bigger one. That's all. You can buy a bigger one. You can do the same thing with a little one. And so we're going to do a littler one uh, on the front door and I don't even have anything on that one. So this one, we're just going to deck up. Uh, however it morphs together with the stuff that I brought and I'll just kind of videotape it for you to see. Uh, there's other uh, wreath making videos out there if you want to check them out just scroll down below until you find the one that you like. I did one at spring and I just I just did one at my dad's house last week so I'm just going to do these real fast and then we're going to get them hung up.
Oh, I love how this turned out. I love the wreath. I think the revamp on that was really good. It's nice and colorful. I thought maybe I'd put a bow on it. I was thinking about putting it like right there, but I don't think I need one. I think I like it just the way it is. I love the big mum that's there and it's not totally bloomed out. There's tons of buds left on it. So it's got a ways to go before it's done. I like the revamp of the pot. I think that turned out so great and I can't wait till it gets a little bit darker and then these lights will light in there and that will look really cool. I ended up doing different garland around the bottom of the pumpkins and I kept them a lot more simple uh, than what I did at my dad's. I just did some asparagus burn, ferns and uh, some garland in there. And then I just put the garland that I had left from my dad's house. I had one left and I ended up putting it on this obelisk right here. So it kind of drew attention to it. It looked kind of neat. Uh, I love the way the porch turned out. I think it's nice and fun and fall. I still need some pumpkins, but I don't have any of those yet. I don't usually put straw or corn stalks or anything like that, mostly because they kind of make a mess and I just don't like to deal with it. I just like something that's clean and simple. Um, I like the little pumpkin on the table. I like the little picks that we put in the plants. So overall, I just love this. I think it turned out so pretty. Okay guys, that's all I've got today. So hopefully this puts you in the fall mood and maybe gave you some ideas for your front porch. I know I'm really happy that mine is cleaned up. It's kind of like when you clean the house and you're like, nobody touch anything. That's what I feel like with my porch right now. Nobody touch anything. And no wind and no rain and no, no leaves blow in there, please, because it's nice and clean. But I hope you enjoyed this video. I know I had fun doing it and I had fun doing all the things for my front porch. Hopefully you're inspired to go out and decorate your porch. I'm Michelle. Thank you so much for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Bye, everybody.